Hi everyone. Today we're hosting Nilifer Essen Belgin. Welcome, Nilifer. Thank you. So, Hello, everyone. We'd like to start with getting to know you from the beginning a little bit, from your uh, birthplace and what your childhood and early education years and influences look like. Uh, well, thank you again for giving this opportunity. I hope uh, people also enjoy the interview. Well, uh, I was born in Giresun. Uh, that was the place uh, my parents lived first after they got married uh, because my dad's position or job, he, he was working in Giresun. So uh, I was born there and then they lived three years uh, in Giresun, and then they moved to Yozgat, then Bosnia. Uh, by the way, my dad was a topographical engineer, uh, so he was the, like the chief of the office. Uh, so he was traveling to finish all topographical projects of those towns. Uh, so we, we lived uh, in Anatolia. Uh, the last place was Bosnia. Um, uh, until 1976, so we moved to Istanbul uh, after 76, and since then my uh, family lived there. So I uh, basically finished high, uh, elementary school, uh, middle school, uh, high school, university, both all in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, graduated from Marmara Medical School. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to a, a obligatory service for one year. I worked in Konya for one year, so that was a different experience. Um, as a go, oh, I'm sorry, uh, before we go to the medical service part, I am curious, how was it for you to change places so often when you were young? Do you remember anything about that? Was it difficult or what were the advantages um, maybe? Well, most of the childhood that I remember after four years of age was in Bosnia. So I remember very well, um, like seven years we lived there uh, until my fourth grade. So, uh, so that was a continuous, it wasn't disrupted much. So the disruption was much earlier and I, it, I don't remember, like I don't think it affected me much. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, um, I mean, but I know, um, like, living until 11 years of age in Anatolia, I, I, maybe I'm more familiar with the people uh, that I think it's a good experience. Everyone <laughs> should <laughs> at some point. Mm -hmm. so and then you had to do a year, you were saying, after medical school? Yes, uh, it was in Konya, in the center of Konya. Um, it, it was, I was general practitioner in a chi uh, children and gynecological hospital. Uh, so it was a very crowded outpatient uh, clinic that we were seeing. Uh, we were three general practitioners total, and we, we were taking pediatric outpatients. Um, 70 80 patients in a day so <laughs> it was quite overwhelming and also we were having night shifts um, uh, for the woman uh, hospital part mm. uh, so it was quite tired so my guess it, it, it affected my uh, perspective what should i do in, as a pro, uh, like specialist in future so um, oh, so I took the specialty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one did you choose? Pediatrics or ob obstetrics? I took the special from the medical school. I was thinking to be a pediatrician, mm -hmm. but then working in a pediatrics hospital, uh, like in you know, that overwhelmingly busy uh, way, uh, I thought, oh my God, it's, it's, there won't be any life for myself. So, what should, you know, but still. Uh, I think at the um, uh, specialty exam, uh, I have written pediatrics uh, clinics mm -hmm. as well. Um, but then um, I also added basic sciences like uh, physiology and I ended up in 
uh, getting into the physiology department at the University uh, Istanbul University Jarrah Pasha Medical School. Mm -hmm. And during uh, those years, um, I really liked the basic science. And you know, if you are if you are given the opportunity to ask what you want to do, what you are searching for, um, that's a perfect field. And um, also, you will have time for yourself, so you will enjoy the life. <laughs> Better work-life balance, huh? Yeah. Uh, so um, that was so. I went back to Istanbul for that uh, specialty training, um, and uh, I that was five years. And after I graduated with a specialty degree or PhD equivalency, um, I got a position at the Kocaeli University uh, Medical School at the physiology department as an uh, assistant professor. So um, I worked there. So that was a new university a medical school, but especially was new. So I was involved with like all setting the educational programs, setting up the physiology laboratories and so it was quite you know painful but also we enjoyed it because we were doing what we want to do and we were trying to shape the system um, so i mean for if you are working in a new established schools there are always problems like money wise or because the structure is not there. So you have to start from scratch to establish the structure. So it's more pioneering work that you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the environment was good. I mean, everybody was uh, uh, young, new, new in academic career. So uh, it was fresh and uh, st stimulating everyone so we had a good friendships in the, like interdepartmental so every department was small but we had a close relationship with the, uh, the other departments mm -hmm. so i always remember those days it um yeah. which is like fun yeah i i have you know still friends in contact nice. so um well so what brought you here then what was the <laughs> How was your transition? <laughs> well, uh, I guess um, it is like more most women uh, up, after certain age. It's I guess love. I may say because um, my husband all, was already living in US and he's a Turkish, uh, but he didn't want to go back to Turkey. So um, I came. So I changed all my life. <laughs> Uh, and how did you meet if he was living here? Was he traveling or were you here for a couple? Yeah, he, uh, one time he was in Turkey for vacationing and we have a common friends. Uh, so we met in a like friends gathering environment. Okay. Well, it took me um, more than four, four years to decide to get married. So for, mm -hmm. for yeah, four and a half years we were like intercontinental relationship. <laughs> Uh, so mm -hmm. I can't say that it is possible. <laughs> Long distance relationships can yeah, <laughs> trust each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as a doctor, I know from my husband that it's very hard to then be able to transition your credentials. You have to go through many steps. Uh, is that something you want to speak to at all? Yeah, for me, since I was in a research field, like physiology is a basic science, and I wanted to continue um, in the same uh, field because I liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I came to US, I didn't want to go to clinical track. Um, I, con I continued in the research track. Um, and it was much easier because I didn't need to get any exam because my credentials were qualified. Were, uh, accepted here like all my medical degree and then the PhD slash specialty degree mm -hmm. uh, so I started as a of course I couldn't start as a faculty but um, I started as a postdoc uh, at, at that time we were in Arkansas Little Rock uh, mm -hmm. where my husband was already there um, so um, yeah I um, but uh, before coming to yes um, I took the, the you know, it's an exam to get um, 
associate professor title in Turkey. So I took that exam so in thinking that one day if I go back, so that that won't be a, <laughs> another exam that I should take. So I, I uh, yeah, I I feel not fine like now that um, still I quit it from my position in Turkey, starting from the beginning as a postdoc. Um, I don't read that much. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I, it wasn't uh, very difficult. I found the position and I love the person I worked with. Uh, so we worked six years together uh, at the um, University of Arkansas Medical School. Uh, neurobiology department uh, uh, so by the time she was moving to another state uh, her name is Tom uh, Tammy Killian by the way um, she offered me a faculty position and once we moved to Omaha uh, but then uh, my husband was looking <laughs> uh, another um, PhD program um, so he was accepted from University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I decided to not to accept her position, but come to Michigan. So uh, I came to Michigan uh, and then I found a position at University of Michigan um, Neurology Department. <clears throat> and um, I worked there three years and then I uh, found a research associate po position at Wayne State Neurology Department. So almost um, nine years now, I, I'm working at the Wayne State University uh, Medical School Neurology Department. Wonderful. It sounds like you're the one making all the sacrifices, but I'm sure <laughs> but yeah. that's not the case. So there's more give and take, I'm sure. Do you want to speak more to that? Well, uh, I mean, so far I, I don't regret what I, what I have made a decision. So, uh, and being together is also a, you know, a reward, let me say that way. <laughs> so um, if I go somewhere else for my professional career and then not living together, what is the meaning of marriage then, you know? Um, so, um, and you know, uh, I, I love him, so I don't, <laughs> I don't mind being together. <laughs> so. And I ask because sometimes it's a challenge, you know, work-life balance is one thing, and then in a marriage when both partners are working, compromise, who compromises, what to yeah. some extent these are big important issues, and women traditionally tend to follow, but you are also somebody who has always worked and was able to maintain. So I guess it's nice to see examples of women who are, even as they're following, end up continuing to be able to hold on to their own dreams professionally. Yeah, well, uh, I liked what I was doing here as well. So I, maybe I wasn't too ambitious to be like the, in, in, job wise you know life is also more important for me mm -hmm. uh, so um, sometimes i say that i work i earn to travel you know <laughs> so uh, i'm trying to balance both i mean i'm not saying that um, i'm not taking my job uh, seriously but um, uh, trying to balance both mm -hmm. so uh, whenever i have time um, uh, I'd like to enjoy and travel. Uh, traveling is the, the more, well, how can I say it? It's not the most important, but um, more enjoyable thing uh, for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so seeing uh, different places and taking photographs uh, during my travel. So that was my hobby also, like yeah. my philosophy maybe. <laughs> Nice. And uh, so do you get to travel for work as well? Conferences sometimes happen in different places. Is that a way yeah. to? Yes, uh, of course. I mean, I saw many places in U.S. maybe initially uh, due to the conferences or because of the meetings. But um, I mean, during conferences, it's quite limited. Uh, 
where you go. I mean, you, you have some, you get some idea about, the, about that town or that area, but um, I, I like traveling uh, like more uh, with more time just doing travel. So mm -hmm. I, instead of like, if you go to a meeting, there's always, a, oh, I should catch this, you know, session and then if there's a one hour break or oh, should I do something or if it, if I was late so it's uh, I prefer not to uh, focus on seeing the town during the meetings I but that I spent uh, or spare time to visit those places in a like vacation context or so as a world traveler and uh, amateur photographer, what are, um, what are your top three favorite places, places that have left a mark uh, in you, or maybe places where you're left a part of yourself, your heart behind? Uh, well, we traveled uh, both like natural areas, like jungles, or also big cities, and uh, hiking, all kind of thing, but um, the, it's quite hard the question, you know, to answer because, um, like, I like big cities in terms of uh, that uh, context. I may say, like, Florence was my favorite, uh -huh. uh, Italy. So uh, it's not too big, but it has everything. I mean, it's uh, it's like living in a museum to me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But one time I was discussing with a friend uh, who had been to Florence as well, and he was saying, oh, that town is a, like the small, narrow street. <laughs> so everybody's uh, expectations or um, uh, taste is different. So I was like, <laughs> I was like shocked at words that he was telling me about Florence. So, um, like, uh, the, the city-wise, you know, I was saying, I love Istanbul, but I was saying that I can live in Florence as well. Mm. Um, what so, about in terms of natural places you visited? Are you more in love with the waters, the oceans, lakes, or are you maybe a mountain person? Have you discovered one geography you prefer over another? No, I, I like well, everything. <laughs> I just like uh, if so, maybe I was thinking, you know, is the traveling more important or taking pictures more important for me? Uh, so I think taking pictures more important to me. So the, if there is a nice frame, everywhere is beautiful. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it shouldn't, uh, it cannot be a whole area, but maybe. I don't know, like a, a view of a lake among trees or uh, a sunset uh, over mountains, you know. So, I mean, nature itself is beautiful. You cannot uh, discriminate that this is beaut more beautiful than the other. So, um, yeah. I. I mean, we have been to Amazons, and the Amazon River was um, brownish, <laughs> muddy-looking river. But still, with the green environment, it looked very nice. And also, the people living around there, and like uh, uh, with colorful, colorful dresses, or the you know the buildings that suits to the environment, and the, the way they fish. Um, so. It was still beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but um, yeah, I, I I just like traveling. Like I want to see um, all natural, also man-made uh, beauties mm -hmm. as well. And maybe I mean I'm not the uh, I'm not using all my photographs to exhibit or. Um, you know, to sell or something that they are mostly for me. And I, I'm also um, sharing sometimes with uh, a photography club that is uh, that exists in Kojeli. So I'm still the member of um, that Kojeli photography uh, mm -hmm. uh, art club, Kask, mm -hmm. its name. So the, I sometimes send uh, photographs to their exhibits uh, or some events. 
But when I was in Turkey, I, of course, I was more involved uh, physically and uh, like doing some slideshows and stuff. But so um, most of those photographs that I take daily life, uh, it's usually for myself these days. <laughs> I don't know what I will do with them, but I, I just like if I take a good shot one day, it makes my day. So I just like that way. Wonderful. And talking about involvement, you're uh, quite a bit involved with uh, the Turkish American Cultural Association of Michigan here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what? Yes. So we moved to Michigan in 2008. Uh, in Arkansas, uh, there was a small group, Turkish Americans trying to get together. But um, in Michigan, I saw that there is a quite well-established uh, association. And uh, first uh, we started attending the events and getting more people, you know, and um, uh, so, chatting of course we have a similar background so we we, we have common things to talk <clears throat> so that was fun and then um i think i i thought i have spare some time to work as a volunteer as well so i, I volunteered uh, as a board member and then um, um I read about all uh, publications or, or old papers, what Takam did and how people, um, you know, volunteered or gave from themselves, uh, kind of uh, impressed me. Uh, so I, I said I can do as well, you know, I can uh, give from myself uh, more so that the association can continue doing its activities or living and uh, so serving. Uh, Turkish Americans in Michigan. So, yeah, that's how I uh, changed my um, perspective about that those associations. So, like TACAM, um, that was established in 1972. At that time, you know, the media was not that was uh, it was not sophisticated like now. So that there wasn't any computer or anything, but they were still um creating newspapers and trying to communicate people and then they they purchased the land with all the donations of the people living in michigan so i mean if you want to do that now it's it's i don't think it's possible like at that time uh, over six years they collected ninety thousand dollars to finish mortgage and have that <clears throat> property <coughs> Excuse me. It's not. It's not for none, but for all at the same time. You know that there is. <laughs> so um, yeah, that those things uh, affected me to become part of that association. And it sounds like you're very much about connections. You either go to places to find beauty and to make new discoveries, or when you're here, it's through, uh, you know, making connections with others. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I like being in contact, I guess. And also, um, I like con connecting people. <laughs> so, you know, if you talk to people, my friends who knows me well, uh, they would say the same thing. So, like I, I, I'm living in US, but I'm making some organizations in Turkey to get my friends together, like my medical school classmates. So, um, I, I guess you are right. I like to connect or being in being connection with people. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's how uh, Takam, and uh, you may know that I was president for years, and uh, during that time, I tried to make it more active so that people can come more, and then they keep it, they they create some connection with the association as well. So it's a continuing thing. So, so we need to uh, make people understand how such organization is important for next generations to continue. So 
I mean, it, it started in 72, uh, so it's been uh, almost 50 years now, 47, 48 years. Uh, it cannot be uh, disconnected is continued, it should continue, right? Mm -hmm. So to, to make that, uh, and all, that is kind of uh, difficult in Michigan because the circulation in Michigan is too high. Like the people are coming, going, you know, the, uh, the engineers comes here to work for certain time sometimes, and students, they get the PhD, starts working, then they'll find another jobs in other states, so they move. Also people get, when get retired, they want to move to uh, southern um, or warmer states. So uh, the, the circulation is high and then uh, some people should make this organization continue uh, without stopping it. So, uh, And you've been one of those people, it sounds like. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, we benefit from your many organizations. Last year before the pandemic hit, I remember around this time we had the big ball in the Kozekim. Yeah, yeah unfortunately this year it's going to be just online uh, program. Uh, but yes, <laughs> so we, uh, that's that, uh, to, uh, that organization, I mean, you wouldn't, ex you wouldn't think how much time and effort and energy it takes for mm -hmm. such people that we do just for volunteering. I mean, we, we pay our tickets as well. So uh, it's, it's incredibly time-taking, uh, energy-taking thing. Uh, so maybe this year it's good to have some break. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how has this been year been for you? Has it been all bad? Uh, or it sounds like there were some upsides you. I think it's always good to hear also, we hear so much about the downsides of the pandemic, but to hear maybe some some ways that it's been good. So I hear yeah. a bit of a respite for you. Well, from well pa pandemic, I mean, affected badly uh, in many aspects, but there is there are some positive sides as well, I believe. I mean, yeah, I mean, People maybe started um, thinking about more themselves and about more life, you know, what they should do. So, like, facing with a debt issue is always, uh, uh, you know, makes people, you know, <laughs> or ring the bell, or uh, I don't know how to express. Priorities. <laughs> yes, priorities. Uh, so, is there anything that you have um, you have concluded you ought to prioritize differently since we've been living this now for a while? What have you learned, either about yourself or how you want to do anything differently, if that is the case? Uh, well, um, I'm thinking um, more that you know we should spend more time with our parents. I mean, uh, both um, my husband and me uh, both lost our dads, uh, but uh, our mothers um, are in Turkey and they are, it's, you know, quite old. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long, how long more they will live. So, um, I, you know, I'm thinking and also telling my husband that, you know, maybe we should um, <clears throat> spend more time with them and take some arrange work things here uh, to more flexible way that we can go to Turkey and spend more time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, thinking of uh, life or like what we have in you know in front of us, like how many days. <laughs> so, so I mean, I I was I always think uh, those things, but um, I guess facing with uh, that many that news mm -hmm. uh, makes you think more, maybe. Yeah. So reminding you not to take um, people, but especially our elders for granted, because they are. Yeah. 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 So is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would like to like people to know about you? About whatever part of your life 
doesn't matter, professional, personal, anything that you wish I had asked you. Well, uh, not much, I guess. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I, I talk most of the things that I live through. Um, so let me ask you, what is a place that you really wish to go that you didn't get to yet? Since you're such a, you have such a um, appetite for travel, world traveling. Uh, well, the list is long, but, <laughs> and um, so if there wasn't any pandemic, maybe I can answer that way. If there wasn't any pandemic, my, the, uh, the first place or one of the first place in the list was uh, Bhutan. Uh, so uh, I, uh, last year I, I planned going there and attempted like searching how to go, what to do kind of things so was, uh, I, I didn't have much time. So the last minute tickets were, were too expensive. So um, yeah, I, I think uh, I wanna see that um, closed country, <laughs> let me say. Uh, my husband wants to see New Zealand, Australia. Uh, I, I, it's not, that my priority, but uh, why not? I say. <laughs> so actually, uh, recently I was thinking, uh, you know, since uh, Australia and New Zealand are more safer, looks like uh, mm -hmm. we may plan going there. But I uh, I heard that the, they closed the borders to anyone. I actually, so it's, it's not possible. So yeah, during COVID, it's. I I can take the risk of traveling, but when you go to some other country, there's you know the, the closed borders or visa issues. Uh, it's always a problem. So probably I can we imagine in the absence of a possibility to travel that your photographs become even more uh, precious because you can through your photography at least you know reminisce about the places you have been. Yeah. Well, uh, nature is also very nice in Michigan, so I get the chance to, you know, see around and daily mm -hmm. pictures. I mean, even like red leaves or the yellow leaves mm -hmm. um, make my day. Like uh, last week, we walked in the Atatürk Park in Takam's area, in Takam's property. So it was so beautiful. I mean, the, the, the trail, it's not that long, it's a quarter mile trail, but it was mm -hmm. full of pollen leaves and the tree with the trees making a, a, a like a roof uh, so the, the pet looked very nice and mm -hmm. uh, the, the colors were nice so I took some pictures <laughs> I guess one thing that you're leaving me with is the sense that uh, I ought to pay more attention to the beauty that's always all around us you know, mm. there is great beauty in details and yes it's wonderful to get to travel the world but when we can't yeah let's go outside uh, pay attention exactly so, uh, uh, like sometimes even if i am like on the beach laying down i find different um, you know seashells or like sea uh, related uh, things and i can take some pictures or <laughs> with all like artistic to my phone <laughs> artistic to me not to everyone but <laughs> uh, I'm definitely trying to take their picture and share so. now I'm definitely curious about your photography is the picture we see in the background is that one of your photographs by any chance uh, no that is a painting oh, you mean this one yeah, uh, yeah. that is a painting um, but I, I mean, I don't know who made it. I purchased in Home Goods one day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wish I can. I wish I could paint. So sometimes, you know, you see the colors of nature, but when you take the picture, um, some it's not the same sometimes. Mm. So I, at that time, I say, I wish I, I can paint. <laughs> I could paint. So I, I unfortunately. Uh, I mean, I can do some, you know, 
primitive painting, but not <laughs> I'm not talented, I guess, in that way. <laughs> Well, photography is a fabulous form of art as well. I certainly now really am eager to see some of your photos. So hopefully... Uh, recently, I, I'm sharing in um, Instagram. Okay. If you are, there, if you are using so Instagram. Maybe when we post this video underneath it, you could share your link to Instagram. Sure. That people can, have... if they're as curious as I am after having talked to you, they can go in check out we used to um, <clears throat> my husband started creating an album website uh, from the pictures we took we took during our travels but uh, I, I mean recently because of the digital camera you know you, you take everything almost and you need to select some of them uh, and it takes time so we don't have much time to work on it and he's not uploading uh, those recently so <laughs> i guess but if we retire we may work on it <laughs> now you take them later you can sort through them <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure chatting with you today and i really do look forward to seeing your photographs oh thank you Balan. uh Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I guess these um, chats or söyleşiler will get to know each other more. And uh, if we meet somewhere in Michigan, in like in, in at Takam, maybe we uh, we will have more things to talk about each other. So uh, thanks for starting that. Well, thank you for offering. <laughs> it's my pleasure, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.